Hey y'all, it's Alex from You Should Craft, and today I'll show you how to crochet this super easy double crochet dishcloth. Both the dishcloth itself and the border are entirely double crochets, so this is a super easy project, especially if you're a beginner crocheter, or if you're just someone looking for like a quick dishcloth. So um, in the video, I will show you how to make the scrubby size, but I'll also pop up a size chart so that you can see how to adjust it for larger sizes. Like this one is about eight and a half inches square, whereas the scrubby is like four-ish inches. So let's go ahead and get started with our materials. For the double crochet dish class, you will need two different colors of worsted weight cotton yarn. I'm using Lily Sugar and Cream yarn. You can pick this up from any craft store or online. You'll need an H 5 millimeter crochet hook. This is a Furls Odyssey, but any hook will work. And then just standard notions. So I've got a little tape measure, um, a tapestry needle, and scissors. We'll start with a starting chain. The number of stitches that you put in your starting chain will depend on what size dishcloth you're making. I'm going to do the scrubby size in this tutorial video. It'll end up being about 4 by 4 inches but there are larger sizes. I'll go ahead and pop up the size chart. You can also follow along with the written pattern. It's free on the You Should Craft blog, or if you'd prefer an ad-free printable PDF, you can grab one in my Etsy or Ravelry shops. So for my starting chain for the scrubby size, I'm gonna chain seven plus two for a total of nine stitches. That plus two, gives us our turning chain, which will count as a double crochet for this row. So here's seven and our one, two, so here's nine. And then these are double crochets, so I'll yarn over and then I am going to put my first double crochet into the third chain from my hook. So here's one, two, and three. I'm putting it into the back bumps, which are those little bumps when you turn over your chain. So the front has like V's and the back has these bumps. So again, I am going into the third chain from my hook. And this is just a double crochet. So yarn over and pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through two loops. And then yarn over and pull through those last two loops. So there's your first double crochet stitch. And now I'll just continue to double crochet across this row. And there's our last one. So we can just quickly double check to make sure we have eight. And remember this turning chain here counts as a stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're good to continue. So now I'll turn my work. I like to start rows of double crochet with a chainless starting stitch. So I'll show you how to do that. If you don't want to do that, you could just chain two and count it as a stitch. So I've inserted my hook in the first stitch. I'm yarning over and pulling up a loop, and then I will yarn over and pull through two loops. So now I have a single crochet stitch. And then since I'm doing a double crochet, I need it to be twice as tall. So I'm gonna insert my hook into this, um, like the leg of the single crochet. And I'm going to do another single crochet. So treating this as a chain, I'll pull through. Now I have two loops on my hook and then I'll yarn over and pull through those two. So it's like there's two single crochets stacked on top of each other. And then I'll just double crochet down the row. So Got 
got a couple more left and then I'll be done with row two. So I can double check my stitch count. This chainless starting stitch counts as one. So I only have seven, so it's a good thing I counted, and that's because I missed this turning chain from the first row. So I'm gonna crochet into that so that I end up with the right amount of stitches in my row. All right. We're gonna do a total of four rows of double crochet for the scrubby size, at least in this color. You'll add the border, which will make it a little bit bigger. So I'm doing that chainless starting stitch again. So it's those two single crochets stacked on top of one another. And then I'm just double crocheting down the row. All right, let's double check our stitch count. All right, we got eight, so we are good to go for our last row in our first color. And then we'll move on to the border. So here's that single crochet for our turning chain, or chainless turning stitch, and our second one. And then I'm just double crocheting down the row because this double crochet dishcloth is 100% double crochet stitches. Even the border is going to be double crochets. All right, so I'm coming up on my very last stitch. And we're gonna change the color on this one. So I'm actually not gonna finish the stitch. So I'll go ahead and trim my yarn with my scissors, leaving like a six to eight inch tail so I can weave in those ends later. And I'll switch out for my darker color, which is my border color. And I'm just going to lay my yarn over the top of my hook. And I'm going to pull through and I'll just finish that stitch that I had started with the light blue. And I'll just finish it with this darker kind of denim colored blue. So now I'm going to do... I'm, I've turned my work like... 45 degrees and I'm going to crochet down this side first. So this is double crochets. I'm going to start with that like chainless starting stitch that we've been practicing but you could also chain two. So here's like that single crochet. I'm going into the leg and then single crocheting on top of that one. So as you go around you're just going to put two double crochet stitches in each of the double crochets from before. I like to go all the way around the stitch. I find that that gives it a cleaner edge. So I'm inserting my hook into like the space right here between the two double crochets. So the part where it gets a little bit weird is in the corners. If you were doing a single crochet border, you would put three stitches in every corner. And we're kind of doing that too, but we're crocheting like extra stitches because there would normally be two here because it's a double crochet. So we're actually going to do five in this corner space.
All right, so that gives you one because you would normally need one in the double crochet or like you normally need two, but one of them's the corner. So it gives you your first one and then the three for the corner and then one for kind of the first stitch on the other side. So now I'm gonna double crochet into the other side of the starting chain because now I'm here at the bottom of my work. So I'll just go through both loops. Um, you'll skip this first one because we already did the double crochet for that one. It's one of the five. So now I'm going into both loops and I'm just double crocheting across this row. And since these were your starting chains, it might be a little bit tight to get your hook in there. So you might have to kind of wiggle it around a bit unless you had a really loose starting chain. So now instead of crocheting into this last chain, I'm at the corner. So just like before, I'm gonna crochet five double crochets into this corner and I'm just totally gonna go around the stitch. So I'll be like in this hole between the two double crochets. So here's one. So that brings us around to this other side. So just like on the opposite side, we'll put two double crochets around each of these double crochets here, the ones that were in the lighter blue. So I'm inserting my hook between the edge double crochet and the next one, and just double crocheting two stitches. So now those ones both have two, but now we're at the corner again. So just like before, we're going to put five stitches into this corner. And five. So now again, I'll skip this double crochet because I've already got the stitch in this corner. And then I'll just crochet down this row and that'll finish off my border. So then we can join and weave in the ends on our double crochet dishcloth. So on this corner, we've already kind of started it. And from where we started, we've got two stitches in here already. So I need three more to finish off the border. So now you can go ahead and trim your yarn, leaving like a six to eight inch tail. Um, I never actually measure, I'm just kind of guesstimating. And then insert your yarn into your tapestry needle because we're going to do an invisible join to finish off the border. So to do an invisible join, I've already pulled my yarn all the way through the top of the last stitch. And then I'll find the first stitch and we're basically gonna copy this V right here by making a new one right on top of it. So I'm actually gonna insert my needle into the second stitch in my border. I'll pull it through. And then I'll insert it back down into the top of the last stitch, the one that I just finished. Okay. 
and then be careful pulling it tight. You want it to be like a similar looseness to the stitch that you're covering up so that your the V that you make is like invisible. So it just blends in with the tops of the other stitches. So this looks pretty good. So now I'll just weave in my ends. And then I'll be done with my double crochet dishcloth. Because I've got my double crochet dishcloth like body and I've got the double crochet border. So go ahead, finish weaving in your ends and trim it up. If you have a bigger size, then, you know, you might still have a little bit of work left to do since we did this teeny scrubby size in the example. But that is it. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to the You Should Craft channel and check out the You Should Craft blog for more free patterns and crochet stitch tutorials.